Now, you know the sky's going to fall. You're not going to have a friend left. Everybody's going to disown you. They're going to hate you. And the disappointing part for me is nobody did. That was, why was that disappointing? Hey guys, I got what I feel is a very unique and interesting video, an interview with Charlie. And this is going to be like somewhat of a long-winded intro because there are certain things I need to preface just to get everybody on board, or to make sure they're on the same shoot of music. Uh, so it is Pride Month, right? And I thought this would be an interesting interview to get out. Now, with all that said, I'm kind of indifferent to the whole thing. I'm not like a diehard supporter. I'm not like marching in parades, but I'm not against it. Like, I, I, I don't really care, uh, to be perfectly honest. Like, there's certain things I feel very strongly about, and then other things I'm more indifferent to. Now, with all that said, I'm all about and support acceptance and understanding. So that's one reason why I wanted to have this interview, because to me, it made no sense. Like, Charlie is such a badass. He's what I would have considered like a guy's guy a judo master, a, uh, a SWAT commander, just a real badass. And to transition into a woman uh, just seemed a little odd to me. So I really wanted to pick her brain about this whole thing. Because like for me, from my perspective, being a guy, I love being a guy. I can never think of not wanting to be a guy. Like I don't know what happens in the afterlife, but let's say hypothetically you're given a choice uh, to come back to this planet and you get to choose, do you want to be like a guy, do you want to be a girl, do you want to be whatever. hundred times out of hundred, I would come back as a guy. Uh, but if I was really given a choice, I might not even come back as a person. I, I would probably come back as like an eagle or something, just so I could like fly around everywhere. But I would be a guy eagle, I would be a male eagle. That would be my choice, if given a choice. But, um, but that's the whole point of this thing. Like, I don't really think, a lot of people might think, oh, you know, some of these people maybe have mental health issues or something. After you listen to Charlie, I don't really think, um, obviously he had to make a decision, but I don't really think he had a choice. Uh, you, you, you'd want to study the psychology of it, but it, it'll make sense when you watch the video. Anyway, we're going to get more into like his martial arts and all that badassery like in the next video. This one, going to talk about all kinds of things like when, when, he, knew he, when, when he, he knew she was, when she knew she was a woman. Uh, see, even even that stuff's like messing me up. But again, uh, I'm a little ignorant on the thing. Uh, don't assume negative intent. I'm trying to be a, as respectful as I can. Speaking of which, please be respectful in the comments section. This wasn't even Charlie's idea. This was mine. And I'm really just asking stuff I was so curious about. And I know a lot of you guys are, you know, curious about too. So I, I thank Charlie for basically answering all these questions. And, you know, obviously she's not like the face of the trans community, but... She does provide a unique perspective, and I got a better understanding after this whole conversation, and uh, I hope you guys do as well. But anyway, we're going to talk about the procedures, we're going to talk about pronouns, birthing people, all these hot topics right all over the, um, the, the mainstream news cycle, especially this month. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. I do have my own opinions. I'm opinionated. Anything I say has nothing to do with Viking samurai, so don't take it out on him. You can, you can. I'm a big girl. You can, you can throw it at me. Just leave him alone. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Charlie. Okay. But this is the thing that confused me the most. So, you're like a lot of people that watch the channel. As far as you're into martial arts, you're a martial artist yourself, which we're going to talk about. You got into law enforcement, SWAT, like all things I consider. Is like very manly things, very guy things. So mm -hmm. when I found out that you had actually transitioned, which we'll talk about later, it's like, well, it doesn't really make sense to me because you're like a guy's guy based on your background. So just to start off, like at what point in your life did you kind of feel like, I think I'm a woman or I know I'm a woman or I am a woman? Like at what point? Uh, probably as early as I can remember. Really? Four, three, four, five. But here's here's the the caveat that I'm older. I'm you know I'm long of tooth, which you probably don't know what that means. But uh, that means as you as you get a little bit older, your gums recede, and they say you're long of tooth. Oh, that's where that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I had to ask somebody once. Interesting. But uh, 
I was in my in my basement. Uh, my dad was from Missouri. My mom was from Montana. My dad was a big guy, just a mechanic, you know, been in World War II, just a show me kind of guy. But anyway, I was in the garage and my sister was uh, eight years older than I was. And I was probably four. And we were in there playing with a bassinet and dolls and stuff. And I was having a, a natural time. I, I was feeling good. And my dad walked in early from work, saw that, backhanded my sister across the garage. Wow. And said if he ever saw that again, he would beat the hell out of her. Uh, that told me who I had to be at that point, no matter how I felt. I didn't want to be put in a gunny sack with rocks and thrown in the bay. Sure. I uh, really, I mean, it, it scared the hell out of me. So, so from that point on, I had to be as macho as I could, even though that's oh, not that's my feeling. Interesting. So, so you, you had to be as macho as you could. You know, if you think about it though, like a lot of guys play with dolls, but they just yeah. happen to be like GI Joes. I used to play with those, right? With like little tanks right. and stuff, but we're still playing with dolls. They're just killing each other, you know? I did that too as I got a little older because that, that was what I was expected to do. Okay. But but Charlie, is this why you got in the martial arts? Because you felt it was a manly pursuit and you wanted to, you know, prove or look like you were a manly guy, especially because of your dad? No. No? <laughs> you know, my brother, my oldest brother, who was quite a bit older than I was, quite a bit older. You know, I was the baby of the family. I was a, I hate to say this, but probably in today's world, I'd have been an abortion because I had, you know, an old brother, an older brother, 10 years older. I had one 18 years older, just about. And then my sister, eight years older, and then I popped out, uh, which that's, that's a whole different story. But, but my brother, was he was in the first unit of the Green Berets back in like 53. Wow. And he was a badass John Wayne. He was a, uh, I love that guy. He was out of out of my three siblings. He was more my dad than my dad was. He actually uh, was doing judo in the, in, the, in the army when he was in there, and uh, he was going against like I think the guy's name was Don Dreger back in the day. Was a big time judo person in the military, hmm. and he would come home and I'd be you know I'd be a youngling and he'd just take my feet off my me you know, wouldn't hurt me, just bang. Sure. And I swore that I was going to get even with him. I was going to learn how to beat him. Okay. So, you know, as soon as I started, I bought books that weren't available back in the 50s. But I, I, I found books. I found everything I could and started practicing with friends who hated even coming over to see me. Because, they, you know, I'd be dropping them all over the place sure. as best I could with fumbling, fumbling, bad technique. And But I I was dedicated to learn. And uh, but the bad part about that is when I got old enough to old enough to just go after him he was too old to do it to <laughs> so, oh you know, so did you I never ask to... him to train you charlie like your brother never trained you or well he only got to brown belt. okay and uh he did show me uh casey Gatami, which is a just a mad hold and it's a control hold on the ground when you you lay on somebody in the unskilled or even a lot of wrestlers once you lay on them you're not trying to pin them you're just controlling them they can't get out of it as a general rule and they get worn out quickly. And uh, trust me, in high school and wrestling class, I use that a lot. Okay. Okay. So you, you went know, in the wrestling more, too. Well, that is part of PE back in the day. Yeah, it know. is interesting. I do remember even in the 90s, like that was part of PE. I don't think it is now, but we literally had to wrestle each other. I don't, I don't think kids have to do that these days, though. Well, that, that would be way too violent. Yeah, of course. It was fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, so it's dodgeball. What are you going to do? That's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah, that's no, going to be bad these days, too. So that's, that was the main reason I got into judo. Plus, again, another reason was why I really started. I dedicated myself to martial arts for a long time because I knew who I was inside and who I would eventually have to be, either that or kill myself. Wow. And, uh, I mean that's it's it's that serious. I know a lot of people that have had done suicide because of this because they couldn't they couldn't live with the fact and they couldn't they couldn't transition or they would have been emotionally, mentally, and physically destroyed. So I, I uh, do want to bring up one thing that you know it, 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 this this whole thing is really controversial because you also have the stories on the other side where people do transition and then they end up like regretting it and, and finding yeah. out 
well, actually, I made a mistake. Obviously, that doesn't sound like that, that you know, ever happened to you, but. Well, I've had a lot of, I've had different counselors, like down at the university, and friends send their friends over that want to transition. And I do my best to talk them out of it. Oh, really? Oh, so interesting. Do take drugs, take Valium, do whatever you can, lithium, don't do it. You know why? Why do you try to talk people out of it? Do you just think they're confused? Well, <clears throat> I want you to think about this fact, and this is how I view it. If I can talk them out of it, they shouldn't do it. Okay, so it's not like you're necessarily trying to talk them out of it. You're just making sure that they are legitimately there the wrong no sex, right? There, there, there are no do-overs in this. If you 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 take the step, you, you you don't go back. So if I can talk you out of it, you shouldn't be doing it. Nobody could talk me out of it. Let let, let me you ask you this, I mean? Charlie. What do you think about the children? Because I know that this is a big thing where they have like puberty blockers and all these other things. So you said you knew for a fact since you were four. Do you think these kids who are like in third grade or fourth grade can actually make that decision? I do not. You do not. I do not because as kids, we're all confused. Sure. I mean, we are. And, I, you know, it took me a long time to. You know, I, I've, I've been married four times and divorced four times to women yes okay so j j just real real quick me. charlie so yeah. gender you you are a, a female but as far yes. as like sexual orientation you're still attracted to females well that's a good question isn't it because it is. gender, <laughs> you know here's here's you know you bring that up and this is i think the one thing that is a pet peeve to me is when i meet somebody that doesn't know me and they'll and they don't know exactly what to say. The first thing they say is, well, I have gay friends. And I look at them and said, well, so do I, so what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think everybody knows at least one gay friend, right? What's the big deal? Sexual orientation and gender identity have nothing to do with it. Mm. <clears throat> They're not, they, have, they don't interweave. They're two separate things completely. Interesting. I told my psychiatrist, which I had to go through, there's such a thing, there used to be, I don't know about anymore. But if you were going to transition, you had to go through what they call an RLT, a real life test. You had to actually get the driver's license, live the life of a female for a year before you could be approved for surgery. That's a because, good idea. Well, yeah, to see if you could survive emotionally, if you could pull a job down, support yourself, uh, stay alive. I mean, basically live a life. And uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a challenge to just live your life. And when I was talking to my psychiatrist, I said, you know, I wish I was gay because I, I'm attracted to women. Mm -hmm. And I wish I was gay because it'd make a lot more sense. Matter of fact, it make a lot more sense because I feel like I should be dressing like them and looking like them. And she laughed at me and says, well, after you transition, if you're still attracted to women, you get your wish, you're gay. So I just walked out of it. Go, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. So, you know, and I could see why it would be easy to get that confused and it, it kind of confuses me um but you know like you said it's not one of the same the gender and the sexual orientation so it's basically you transition to a woman so you're you would basically define yourself as a gay woman then well i don't define myself as anything i'm just no. me yeah okay I, really <laughs> but, I, I, I am I, I really don't I, I don't put myself in a box people say who am i attracted to i said it depends on the person so if you I ever, would be bisexual then? Possibly. Possibly. If you want to put the box to it. If I ever, <laughs> if I, I, I won't get too intimate on things, but if I ever, ever, ever uh, been attracted to a, a man? Yes. If I've been attracted to women? Yes. A lot of the women I've been attracted to is who I wanted to look like. But, you know, that's like, that's a different thing. Oh, but, well, let, let, let's go there real quick. Like, um... I mean, they're always gorgeous women. Trust me. And I always told them up front. I have these feelings. Oh, I can change you. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You. Women will always try to fix you, right? <laughs> or fix yeah, the well, Yeah, I just didn't. No, nah, it's just, you know, that's the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing the same way, expecting a different outcome this time. This time it'll work. Or this time, no, it doesn't. Which, you know? funny enough, you, you were married four times and divorced four yeah. times. Uh -huh. Got kind Matter of insane, fact, my right? First, <laughs> my first spouse also went into law enforcement. Really? Okay. And uh, and we're friends. 
And that's we're over 50 years ago. I mean, what got you interested in law enforcement anyway? Uh, well, we can go back to the transitioning thing, being macho. You know, being macho. I'm, so real quick, real quick, Charlie. If I'm carrying a gun on my side. Nobody's looking at me. They so don't see who I you know basically, I really so I had it all wrong then as far as like, I just figured you're a macho guy because you're in a martial arts and law enforcement, all this stuff. And I'm like, why would he transition? Whereas you're kind of more like you got into the macho stuff of almost like the opposite of what I was thinking to you're right. put on the persona of being macho because you really were like a woman, I guess. And if I ever had, you know, another part of the martial arts is I knew this would eventually happen. It would come out. And I wanted to be able to defend myself, my perception of other people and how they would take it. Oh, so you figured like you knew you were eventually going to make the transition someday and probably people wouldn't necessarily accept you and people might even get aggressive and you're like, I need to defend myself someday yeah. if that happens. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, see, now this kind of makes sense. And this is why I wanted to talk to you and ask you about this stuff. It's well, like, now this is me. I mean, everybody has their own story. Oh, of course. Of course. And I've talked to a lot of other, other like I said, I'm in a group called transgender police and sheriffs. We have a badge. We which, which is, uh, with gender I told my wife with gender about gender. that. I'm like, he's in a whole group of these cops that transitioned. This isn't like, yeah. he's not and, a one-off guy. This is like, oh, there's a lot of people like him. And, and we have them from, you know, England and that, but, but uh, and most of them are great people, but they, if you, if you talk to them, the book covers are all different, but the stories are all pretty close. You know, it's like you're reading the same book. But yeah, uh, because I, I, our own experiences. I mean, it all makes sense now because I was just thinking I could understand if this was, you know, a guy who was in the makeup and flowers and that stuff. But it's like, no, he's a martial arts cop guy. It's like, he just seems like a guy. You, know? you have no idea how tough it is, too, because a little known fact, well, it's not a little known fact, but women learn how to be feminine when they're children. They're taught by each other. They practice makeup. They practice painting each other's nails, hair, all of this stuff. And when you transition when you're older, you don't have that experience. So, I mean, if if you can't do it when you're really young, it's not an easy process, you know? Yeah, that, that that's a good point. You know what they should do? Because you, you had mentioned, like, they, they kind of have the thing where you should live a year as a woman, you know, like on your license, your lifestyle, etc. They should actually have a program, and maybe they do, where you, you they, they would connect somebody like you with, like, a female um, and, and kind of teach you the ways, right? So there are women that actually do that as a profession. Uh, oh, that they, is a thing. Uh, okay. Walk, it makes uh, sense. It seems like to, a business. How to walk, that... walk feminine, how to you know, to change your voice. Now, you talked about the weight lifter, the power lifter, the transition. Yeah. Well, she went in and had vo vocal surgery. Now, she came out and sounded really good. There's no argument there. Still looked like a hunk. hunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, huge. But you know, you, it's hard to get rid of these 35-inch biceps or whatever. Sure. But, uh, but she sounded really good. But when I, when I talked to any doctors about that, they said, we can't guarantee you won't sound like Minnie Mouse. Oh. There's no guarantee. Just like facial feminization surgery, FFS. Uh, I met a person over in Thailand that went over there and had that done before they had surgery. Uh, it's funny. It looked about uh, 60 minutes for me, and I had to meet the person in Thailand. But uh, so had the surgery and uh, came out looking really good. But it's costly, and I'm and and I was thinking about that because it's a it's a major procedure. Uh, if you see the movie Face Off with uh, John Travolta, oh yeah, and, uh, it's a great movie. It's about like that. Wow. They actually they actually uh, uh, Doctor O, which is down in San Francisco, is one of the was one of the masters of doing it, and they actually they cut the they cut the face off and pull it down. They grind the forehead. Yeah, that's crazy. They grind the forehead down so it's. It's back because after puberty, males get the thicker forehead. That's why they can take the blows. They're hunter gatherers. You know, they, 
They take this down, they'll insert cheekbones if you need them. You know, I, I had good ones, so I didn't need that. They break the hell out of the nose and reshape it, which, you know, and you wind up eating out of a straw for a month afterwards. Jeez. They actually cut a section of the jaw out to lift it up. And then they'll go in and play with the Adam's apple. It's a major thing. And they guarantee no one will ever mistake you for a male again, but they don't guarantee you'll be pretty. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's talk about... And, and at my age, I didn't want to put out the 50K to do that. Mm. Let's talk about the actual procedures and or hormonal therapies that you, you had. So you, you got all this done, like, I think you told me in like 2005, right? 2005 is when I had it done. I started my transition in... 2003 and a half. Okay, so you started and, the uh, transition in 2003 and a half. Now, obviously, like, why all of a sudden, you know, because you could have done it in 1990, you could have done it in 2000. Why all of a sudden were you just like, okay, it's 2003 and a half, I'm just going to do it? Well, I was going through a, a lot of emotional issues. Uh, I mean, my feelings were just just bubbling over. Uh, I'd lost my, I'd lost, uh, my, my dad died when I was like 17. Mm. Uh, but my mom, my mom and my last sibling both died within six months of each other. Oh, wow. Sorry. And I was, I was, just, I was having a lot of, a lot of issues and I'm, I just, you know, it was thoughts of suicide were present. You know, I, I, you know, it's not because of the, the loss of siblings because we all go through that. We have to. It's part of life. Yeah. You know, it's like calling life insurance. Life insurance is really not a death insurance because we, we're all going to do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not be who I was anymore. And actually, my last spouse said, "Why don't you just go talk to a doctor?" So that's when I saw my psychiatrist, and we talked for uh, kind of a funny thing. I. I was talking to a psychologist about it and he sent me down to the psychiatrist says, you need to go talk to her. Now she was a head of psychiatry in Northern California for this, uh, you know, for the medical profession, this organization. And she had a three year waiting list and I was in there in two days. Wow. And I sat there and talked to her for like two and a half hours. She canceled other appointments because she didn't want me leaving there and killing myself. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, she had me in tears a few times and stuff, and uh, we worked through it. And it was, I've never been a big proponent of uh, psychiatry because that, that denotes that you're crazy, you know. I mean, that's a lot of people, oh, you're a psychiatrist, you must be crazy. Well, okay, maybe. But uh, she helped a lot, and I saw her, her, you know, for six months you now, once a month for six months. Mm -hmm. Had a couple hour session each time. And she was a Star Trek fan, so how could I hate her? But uh, it worked out well, and she signed off on a letter and said, why don't you just go have the surgery? You need it. And I said, that's a big step. You know? She says, well, yeah, but that's what ultimately you're going to have to do. You know, Either that or yeah. you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life, however long it is, because I've been miserable for that many years. Let, let me ask you this, Charlie. I, you know, I know you said your, your father had passed and, you know, your siblings. Um, do you think it's something that you couldn't have done while your dad was still alive? Because it seemed like oh, really absolutely not. not yeah, still okay, that makes sense. Because he had to put on the whole macho persona and everything in a way and get involved with, you know, martial arts, law enforcement. Well, my everything. oldest brother, uh, he died before I transitioned. He didn't know. Uh, so you never, was. like, had a discussion with your family on how you really felt? Oh, hell no. Okay. Oh, no. Not not even your sister, because you'd almost think you could have that conversation with your sister. No, she, she turned into be a uh, not a nice person, heroin addict. Uh, oh, she got thrown out of the house when she was seventeen and wow. uh, went down a really bad path. Mm. So no, but her kids, you know, she had four kids and was married once for a week, I think. But uh, two of the kids are they're you know obviously my nephews and nieces, and two of them are in the area, and we get along great. There's no issue. Oh, that's good. That's good. So there's that. And, uh, you know, the biggest, the biggest part about, you know, that the, the, the ceiling is going to fall on your head when you tell everybody this, hmm. they know you, who you are. They're afraid of you, not afraid, but they respect the hell out of you, you know? 
because of what you've done or what you can do. No, commanding the SWAT team, running the schools, all the macho stuff. And you say, well, you know, I'm going to transition and become a woman. Now, you know, the sky's going to fall. You're not going to have a friend left. Everybody's going to disown you. They're going to hate you. And the disappointing part for me is nobody did. That was, why was that disappointing? Because what was my fear? I was afraid for so long about this. And yet when I told them, they were all supportive. My best friend at the time, I told him, he's still my best friend, but he's got a lot of medical issues. But I told him and we're sitting at dinner and he just looks at me and smiles and says, well, now I know what to buy you for your birthday. <laughs> so, asshole. But anyway. Uh, so, yeah, um, he, uh, you, I mean, that that's actually great to hear as far as, you know, I think in general, people are, are way more accepting of this stuff than people per, would think. Like even yourself, these are your own friends. And you didn't even think they would accept you. So imagine what, like, a stranger, like, just a, you know, like, the normal trans person would think society, especially based on what the mainstream media is feeding, how it kind of seems like a lot of people have issues with it. Now, there are certain things related to it, but I don't think a lot of people have an issue with the individuals themselves. At least I would hope not. But it, I, I well, think they put that in your head and brainwash you into well, thinking here, that. Here's, here's the thing is... In some senses, I prepared myself my whole life for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of a lot of people I know have a lot of problems when they transition with their family, with their friends, with their jobs. And it's I think it's how they how they come off is the victim, is the poor me. Uh, they're afraid. They hide. They I mean, there's all kinds of issues that. They, they make themselves a victim. I'm not a victim. You know, I, if anybody asks me a question, I'll either, I'll either answer them with, you know, education or humor. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the TV channel. If I don't like what I'm seeing, I can turn it. I don't have to be. Exactly. Exactly. You know like that, that that's the issue I have. Understand me, just accept it. If you can't accept it, have a nice day. Yeah. And that's the crazy climate we live in. You know, it's just well, like all these people, who are um i don't know they they, they want to be like insulted or offended it's like yeah. you don't have to expose yourself to certain things you can block people on social media you could change the channel you could not go on a you forum and read certain things that you don't agree with just avoid it it's not no, no one's shoving in your face you know forcing exactly. it down your throat but they want to be a victim they want to they want yeah they, they want to so yeah. they seek it out and yeah different and mindset I, just, I can't understand that type and that's that's just not me. I'm I'm a sticks and stones girl. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, it's sticks and stones that break your bones, but words can't hurt you. You know, and that's that's how I was brought up. And uh, you know, I got all those phrases that are just inappropriate nowadays from my my youth. But uh, you know, well, let, um, let me ask you this, Charlie. Let let me ask you this, like, because you didn't have like the vocal cord surgery, and. You know, I think most people would say you sound like a guy. Like if they didn't see you, they would think, yeah, you know, you mm. sound like a guy. Uh, do you ever get offended by that if someone says sir or calls you a guy or anything like that? As long as it's not malicious, I ignore it. Well, yeah, of course. Like just like accidentally, you know, like I'll even yeah. say, hey, guys, if even if it's a group of girls, I'll just call them guys. But it's not like yeah. malicious. No, but if somebody says like I, I've heard you say it several times. He it doesn't offend me because I don't. I'm me. I don't care. Oh, did you I know? say that? See, I'm not even aware. You know, like I know that, and I, I know that. Oh. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I didn't want to—I I kept my name the same. I just cut off the e on the end. I, I thought that. I figured that because you know, if I change it to Georgette or Scarlett O'Hara or whatever, and I'm walking down the street and somebody called me, I'd probably keep walking. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I've been me for you know if. I've been macho and me for 50 plus years. You think I can throw a switch and not be? I trained so myself you're to still be like, after the transition, and, and let, 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 let me just like clarify a few things. Cause you know, you had mentioned some people could do vocal cord surgery. Some people could do the whole facial reconstruction. Some people cool. will do like, you know, the literal sex change operation. Some people will do hormonal therapy. 
Um, in the trans community, okay. like as far as you know, do you guys or girls uh, like define someone? Oh, if you did this and this, then you're like 80% woman. Or is it just like if you did one of these five things, you're 100% woman? Like, do you guys even like kind of see yourselves as like, well, he they transitioned 80%. So they're 80% woman, or is it just like, well, you, you did one thing, you're completely a woman now? Well, you know, I, I really respect uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. But I I don't believe she had the surgery, the, the actual surgery for the, you know, the, the uh, genital reassignment yeah, surgery. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, when she was woman of the year. So I'm not sure how that works. I just... No, I don't agree with that. So you I, think in, if in, because Caitlyn Jenner most likely still has her penis, she, she shouldn't be woman of the year? Still, hmm? I don't know if she still does. I don't know if she's ever had the surgery, but I think at that time she hadn't. She did. She started off doing it was obvious. Well, she had the money too. Oh, sure. Was that wasn't an issue for her. Yeah. So she had the uh she had the facial feminization surgery. That was pretty obvious. You can see that. Because her whole structure changed. Now, I don't really know if she's had the the actual surgery. Surgery, you know, and that that was a that was a trip in itself. That was I had fun with that. I had fun with that. I really did. Really? <laughs> what do you mean? Like how so? <laughs> well, you know, I was over in Thailand, and uh, we actually had some doctors from Stanford over there learning how to do it. Watching watching those doctors because they do so many. And I was over there for a month. So, you know, I, I saw the doctor, great guy. His wife was an RN. And Newt and Goon were the two uh, operation nurses that checked on you. Because you stayed in the hotel after you had surgery and you got out of the hospital. You stayed in the hotel for a month. Because they come in daily and make sure there was no necrosis, no anything dying that shouldn't be dying in the skin. And make sure your medications were up and whatever. So I, I was in the hospital and they're... They don't have the bells and whistles that we have here, but they have people. So, I mean, I had a nurse in my room 24 seven, if there was a problem. I was only in the hospital, I was only in the hospital for like two and a half days and then I, I left, went to the hotel because I was hungry. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so they're, they're taking me down from the seventh floor, which by the way, this doctor, the whole floor was his, his patients. The whole two floors up in this hotel were his, his people. Mm. is doing surgery on, I mean, from all over the world. Wow. And uh, so they're taking me down on this gurney to the, the operating room on the third floor, which had a had a wheel like a shopping cart. Get up, get up, get up. So I'm, I'm just bouncing up and down on this thing, having fun going down there. And this wheel was preventing them from making the turn into the operating room. So I jumped off the gurney and ran in and jumped onto the surgery table. And they're all looking at each other like, what the hell, you know? So they hooked me up to do whatever, you know, I don't know if it was a spinal or whatever. The anesthesiologist was in there and they were talking to each other, partially in Thai, partially in English. And uh, so they, they put this blue, I like paper, I don't know, something over my face. And then they cut my throat. Well, it was for an Adam's apple shave. So I got rid of the Adam's apple. Okay. Okay. But I'm awake. Now I'm feeling no pain. But I'm wondering myself, am I supposed to be awake right now? <laughs> That's a little worried. So, yeah, sure. so I start talking, you know, and uh, they say, hey, you guys know I'm awake. <laughs> you know, I, I thought you cut it. And I said, I'm not, there's no, no pain at all. But now I'm feeling you scrape and you feel like you're scraping more on one side than the other. Can you make it even? And, and I, I, think, I think I heard something like, can you shut this bitch up? I don't know. <laughs> you know, just kind of that kind of thing. So they got done with that. I felt them sew it up. There's no pain. Then they take this off. And they put my feet up in the stirrups for the other part of the surgery. And I said, you know, I don't want to watch this. Mm. So I looked up at the seating lights and they weren't there. And I'm looking around. I'm back in my, I'm back in my uh, hospital room. It was 10 hours later. I went oh. like that. They, wow. turned the, they turned the switch and I said, they didn't do nothing. I, I saw the bandages and the tubes. And, oh, yeah, they did. Interesting. But my doctor came in. And uh, it was about midnight he came in. I was 10 hours on the table. And he came in and said, the surgery went very well. And I looked at him with a straight face and said, I changed my mind. And I just watched the blood start running out of his face. And I smiled. Yeah. Just kidding. 
That's going to be awkward. I'm going to get you for this. But yeah, no, I had a, you know, I made a lot of friends over there. You know, I could, I met, met people out of the surgery. They're from uh, Czechoslovakia, England, France, uh, all parts of Europe, even Texas, you know. In the, yeah. That's so, interesting yeah. real quick, Charlie, because, um, you know, like, if you think about it, that unit that guys have, like, you know, uh, guys love that thing. People love that thing. Even females have penis envy. Guys want a bigger one. Like, it, it just seems weird that, uh, and I don't even know if you that's. Grab, you want me to grab mine? I can show it to you. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know just if that's kidding. the common thing. Like, do you, like, going back to Caitlyn Jenner, let's say hypothetically she never went that far. You would still consider her a woman, though, right? Or not? You know, I've never given that much thought. Uh, I think that she, if she wants to really transition, she should have the surgery. Uh, if you're taking the hormones, which we all, I'll have to take those for the rest of my life. But if you're taking those, it's a useless piece of equipment. Oh, so it doesn't but, even function the way it needs to if you're taking, like, probably what, uh, you estrogen or something? Get it hard. It doesn't happen. I mean, it hmm. just, that's why some, some guys that undergo, They'll take female hormones for prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And that really affects their sex life because they can't. Wow. But you know, the alternative might not be bad, might not be good either. I don't know. But I mean, that's just things you learn along the way. Can I get some of those? Can I get some, you know, is your is your before you do a transition, you're trying to figure out how to get hormones because you want to do this. Well, can I tell them I have prostate cancer and get the hormones? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you think about really stupid things when you're growing up. Yeah, sure. So okay, so this is obviously important uh for the transition and, and like you said it probably isn't going to work anyway if you uh if you do the hormones what what about like the chest though is that like standard did you get this done no but they grew oh they just grow because of the hormones yeah I, it depends on everybody's different you know a lot of people like the person i told you that i met over there from post she had these, you know, triple D's put in when she was. Yeah, I guess if you want them really big, you got to get implants just like a woman would, you know, natural born woman would. Yeah, but mine are, mine are sensitive. Mine are, yeah. I mean, mine, they're, they're not bad for being natural. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, just, that's all I can say, you know, I'm, you know, sure. I have the best of both worlds. The one thing I, I regret is not buying stock and toilet paper because I never knew how much I would use going to the bathroom now. Uh, you know, as a male, you don't do that, but now you sit down and do everything and you always use. Yeah, no, it's quite a bit different. And I was almost going to say, maybe, you know, you got to admit as a guy, it's way more convenient, especially if you go camping, if you have to use number one. So it's like, even if that doesn't function with the hormones, it's, it's kind of convenient in a way. You know? It's funny to say that because when I was doing my, my real life test, I went down with a friend down to Yosemite. I'd never been there. And it's, you know, like three hours away, but I've never been there. I've been in California all my life. Mm -hmm. So we went down there and, uh, and I was, you know, I was in the female persona. And so I had to go to the bathroom. So they had these outhouses. I went in there and I came out after I, I did my, cause they had a number one. And I said, God, am I glad I didn't have to sit down to pee at places a pig pen. Yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely an advantage. There's another advantage that, that you you know there's an extra muscle that's not there anymore once the flow starts you don't just punch it off if you want to interesting you go, you go and guys don't know that wow hmm. so you know you can you can squeeze it off but i can't okay. i used to you know? <laughs> yeah so that's got to be a little weird too a little different i could be killed by, I could be killed by women and men because i could write a book on both now and all the secrets and i i, I could kill <laughs> you know all the secrets Funny. we have as guys and women. So, hey. Let me ask you this. So, so you were in Thailand. Seems like you were in really good spirits. You, you were actually joking around. You're having fun. You had the surgery. Like, and I know prior to that, like when you're talking to the, you know, the psychologists and stuff, you were depressed and there's, uh, you know, obviously stuff going on with the family too. But um, so was it like immediately you were just like in better you know, so wait, better wait, mood wait, wait, or what? Like, like I've taken this whole weight off my life. So it was like a switch, just like night and day. I wasn't Boom. lying anymore. I've been lying all my life. Wow. And, and I wasn't lying anymore. 
Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely it was absolutely incredible. And uh, and I'm not saying it's the same for everybody by any means. I mean, yeah, sure. That's why I try to talk people out of it because if I can, I shouldn't be doing it. That's all. Charlie, once all this weight was lifted on your shoulders and you finally felt like you could be the real you. Um, and I know you had that macho persona for so long. Did you start getting into more like female, uh, interest, you know, like, like gardening or, um, what else do I've females done, like I've interior design done, <laughs> done cooking? I've always done that. You've, yeah. And, and you know, cooking can be a manly thing. Also, you, you do associate that with some women, but like, I, I feel cooking could be a very manly thing, at least barbecuing. Huh? You know, my, my, my souffles are very manly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not souffles so much to you. I guess that's more the womanly cooking, but uh, is how I associate it. But, I barbecue um, and oh, barbecue and souffle. Nice, nice. And, uh, <laughs> but in general, though, so you kind of got into more female oriented interests or not no, i never i no. haven't changed i've been i've been me i do what i want to do yeah you do what you want to do but you kind of had the macho persona and the macho you know no, interest I you know, I, you know it, i don't push people out of the way in line you know <laughs> just, yeah. uh, <laughs> somebody cuts in front of me we have a discussion about it oh sure uh, yeah that's my pet peeve man yeah but you know i i think, I think i've always I've always I've always been myself and how I feel. Okay. Uh, like I said, I didn't have the training when I was young, like women get. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do, and I I've had you know I've had suggestions from female friends uh, about clothing, what I should wear, what I shouldn't wear, you know. Uh, and I take it under advisement because I don't want to be. I mean, let me ask you I mean, this. Was, let me ask you this, Charlie. Like when you go out with your friends, do you have a guy's night out or do you have a girl's night out? Girls night out. You have a girl's night. So you may mostly hang out with like females and you do like no, both. Both? Both. Oh, you're, you're one of the girls. Like, yeah. and I guess you would, um, but okay. I mean, that. That's... But they don't, but then again, they will, you know, ask me to help them fix their car at times too because I'm good at it. You know, <laughs> taught auto shop in high school for a while. Okay. So, you know, just, you know, yeah, I tell them to, to grow up here, just do the job, damn it. So Don't would you good. kind of consider yourself like a tomboy in a way? Yeah, I'm not a butch, but yeah, I'm a tomboy. Okay. Yeah, well, I, how, I, how, I, do you, how do you, how do you define? I really don't. That's hard to, that's hard to, for you to understand. I know that, you know, you, you know, you're a macho guy and I appreciate that. that. You know, you, you work hard in your body, you, you, you do what you want to do and you, you you have an image to project. I, I don't have an image anymore. I'm just me. Mm -hmm. I had my image for 50 years, and I and it was a hell of an image. And you know, and then I stopped. I mean, there were times on a. I'll tell you the thought process. We did a SWAT raid at a drug house down in Stanislaus County, and so you know, we had a, a CI confidential informant in the house, and uh, we knew there were like eight people in there. Some of them were armed. So we, you know, the whole the whole procedure without going into, you know, we basically snake up, and, you know, got the third person has a battering ram. We're going to knock on the door, give them 30 seconds to open it, and then we're going to go in. Well, what the CI didn't tell us and maybe didn't know is we pull up to the door. I'm looking up at a video camera. Okay, this isn't going to be such a surprise, is it? So <laughs> Not we, so much. So we went right in because we could. So as we're going in, there's this big Rottweiler, an older Rottweiler there growling at me. And I'm, I'm right at the front because I always took the front because I always wanted to be the one to die. Re yeah. th th this was like pre-transition, right? Yeah. I always wanted to just end it for me. Wow. So I'll be fine with that. So I had the MP5, which is a submachine gun, your fully automatic weapon. <gasps> but, you know, I had that. And then there were several of those in the line. Kick the door and the dog's there. I've got the main suspects on the couch. He's sitting there with a 357 Magnum in his hand. And I go in, I just need the dog out of the way. Now, how it's supposed to work, I go in, everybody follows me, and we all spread out, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground, or whatever, you know. So I go in, and and I'm coming up with this thing on him. And he starts coming up with this 357. He sees this gunpoint. He throws it. So I'm yelling, get on the ground, get on the ground. Everybody's getting on the ground. I'm not hearing any other voices. Hmm. 
So I turn around and look, they're all at the door looking at the dog. <laughs> you know, I, uh, so they finally came in and uh, the dog just doing what it did. I, you know, we didn't hurt the dog. It was, you know, didn't try to bite me. And uh, they're all in fear of this dog. So we had quite a discussion. I'm thinking, okay, it takes the girl here to go in the house. And these guys are all macho out there going, <gasps> yeah, so I don't know. Just, it was crazy times. Yeah, that's but, uh, Yeah, that's crazy. Um, that sounds like a scene from a movie or something, you know? Well, it should have been. I mean, we've got these, we've got this whole group cup on a lot of drugs in the house, and we've got them all in this. We were about an hour away from the jail because it was a county jail and we were in the city. Mm-hmm. So we had to use one of our local city buses, you know, like the smaller buses they have running around for rapid transit. Sure. The transport them at night. So we had them all cupped in there and we were uh we were actually it was abuse under the color of authority because we're all had a cassette, had an eight track actually back in the day. Oh okay. uh Jenny Americans, I fought the law and the law won and we're all singing it, going all the way to the jail over and over again, just punishing these people. Yeah, oh, it was great. <laughs> Pretty good times. Oh, sure. But, yeah, sure. Yeah. We won, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, um, what was the name of that group you, you're in again? It, it's like the cops and sheriffs of like the transgender it's, community, uh, right? It's T-Cops is what it's called. T-Cops, T-cops? transgender police and sheriffs. Yeah. And I think they, I, you know, I haven't been very active in it anymore because I'm here's, here's the thing. And, and I told you we're all different and a lot of them have, have problems, insecurities and, and yeah, that's well founded, but, uh, there was a uh, beauty salon down near the university that actually catered to transgenders, transsexuals, and whatever. Mm-hmm. So when I was thinking about this whole process, I went in there and sit and listen to them talk and whatever, and you know, I'm trying to figure out. And that's where I met one of the, the heads of the group of transgender cops, you know. And uh, so they they would get upset with me because they would about once a month they would get dolled up big time, you know the. The, the long gowns, the stilettos, the, you know, getting their hair done up and up by the salon, just, just completely decked out and all go out to dinner. Mm-hmm. And they always got upset with me because I wouldn't go out. And they said, what are you, too stuck up for that? I said, no, I just don't have to need. I said, you guys are all doing this as a group to support each other and to protect each other because you need that. I live in a redneck county. I got nobody to protect me up there but me. Sure. I've got to learn to live my life by myself and be myself. I can't expect other people to be behind me supporting me. Just mm-hmm. like all the places I've been a cop, a lot of times I'm there by myself on the street with backup 10, 15 minutes away. I'm the only officer. And you definitely get challenged on these streets. Oh, sure. By the, by the bullies for the first few nights you're there when you start. And if you don't handle yourself, they own you. And that's no way to be a cop. Mm. You know, they've got to respect you. You know, and you don't fight fair as a cop. You can't. You know, somebody wants to box me, I'm not going to box them. Somebody wants to, you know, I, again, just like martial arts, I don't box a boxer. I don't wrestle a wrestler. Sure. I did my own mixed martial arts on my, you know, I, back in the Bruce Lee days, he had it right. You take what's best from all the different styles. Let me ask you this, Charlie. Sure. Like, what do you what do you think about like the whole um, pronoun discussion? Like, he, she, it's and so they, them, and there's I don't know, like thirty pronouns these days. <laughs> okay, uh, let me tell you exactly what happened to me at a high school basketball game. Oh, a couple, few months ago, I was there watching the watching the team, and I had some some lady sitting next to me, and I had my friends on the other side, and they had their their kids were playing, and. Uh, I look out there and I said, you know, I can't tell if that's a male or a female because I couldn't. I, I didn't care. I was just confused. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, wondering. And this lady who I don't know said, you know, gender doesn't matter anymore. She snapped at me. <laughs> I smiled at her, looked back at her. I said, I said, if that's true, why did I pay so much for surgery? Yeah. And she just got all red and up. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I stop it. You know, uh, I, I was invited to do a, uh, a speech for Kaiser Permanente for their uh, executives and stuff, a big room about they had a, a male to female, female to male, and a non binary, whatever it. Yeah, sure. Know. And uh, so, you know, they just wanted to ask questions, what we felt comfortable with. 
I could never understand the non-binary. I don't know. I don't know. How can you how can you not relate to be something? Why you don't want to be put in that box? That's I don't get that. And yeah, it is interesting. It is interesting, and it, it it makes sense where it's almost like you would think um, these certain pronouns, you know, almost more important for people who've transitioned like you because you really must see the importance of it if like you transition into the other gender you know so that that's very meaningful probably almost more so for you than somebody like me well i mean it's you would like to be recognized as who you are yeah but if you don't relate to being anything then how can anybody recognize you i mean maybe that's how i feel on the non-binary thing yeah that's yeah. very confusing so you identify as a dog today you want to hump everybody? I don't. I just. I don't understand that. I. You know, I'm not an unintelligent person. I. I've, I've had. You know. But there's some things that I have trouble grasping. I can accept anything. If you want to be a. You know. A rock today, it's fine. <laughs> just don't expect me to call you. Uh. You know. A corbomite or something. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I just. I just can't do this. Uh. It's like birthing person. You can't say somebody's a mom. How can we have Mother's Day anymore? Yeah, that that thing that that's what kind of bugs me. Um, it's like, come on, like let's just biology is a thing. It's always been a thing. <laughs> and because um, let, let me ask you this: as far as you know, has there been anybody who's fully transitioned? Can they even give birth if they wanted to? Can they they? Do, you know, change enough stuff internally, or is that not even a thing? They, they haven't been able to put a uterus in a woman yet. Okay, I mean, so like, like the birthing do. person makes no sense then, because even if someone fully wanted to transition to be a birthing person, they they can't unless they're biologically a female well, woman, now, right? Here's 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 where it can get sticky, I guess, because now you know you have tampons and male restrooms. Uh <laughs> Okay. And they actually do. They actually do now. That's part of the the thing. Uh, I guess if you have the okay, I'm going to be so politically correct. Here. The adedictomy surgery, uh, where they you know put a false penis on a woman because mm. the woman is transitioning to male, takes the hormones, has a double mastectomy, and once it starts taking testosterone, and starts doing the the beard thing. It never goes away. It doesn't matter. Wow. It's going to be there forever once it starts. But okay, if, if that person is now a man, I guess that person could get pregnant. Okay. That person could still get pregnant. So as oh, woman, so they, they could be a birthing a, person. Okay. No, I get I, I I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going with that. I'm a man, but I have a baby. Okay. Uh, <laughs> again, that's that's problematic. That's that's pushing things a little further than I would like to. I mean, I have read stories of hermorphodites that have both sex, both sex organs, and can impregnate themselves. That's Very interesting. And they don't come out. They don't come out whole. They come out really messed. That's a oh, real, oh, interesting. You know, that's why there's never been a. But I'm sure they're working on trying to trying to be able to put a woman a uterus in a male. That way they can, you know. Wow. I don't know why. I, you know, why would I want a period? <laughs> you know, I just. I just I don't, oh, yeah, so I real quick, woman. that's a good question. So, if someone made a transition like you, you, you don't have the normal female cycles where they go through that no. every month. No. See, I, I that's something no. like I never even really I thought still, about I mean, to be honest. What they what they do, and this is going to be a little graphic, but I'll try to keep it as clean as I can. You know, when you have the surgery, they basically slice the member open, mm -hmm. pull out the insides of all the nerves stay there, and then they tuck it inside the body. So you still have all the nerves. Can I orgasm? Yes. Not the same way I used to. Now it's more emotional than it is physical. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, you know, once they have the the uh, Testicle, we'll say testicle, and I won't say balls. But if you have the testicle, <laughs> testicle sack out, they've got to get rid of the hair follicles because mm -hmm. they don't want the hair inside. So they just put, they just scrape it all off. Where here they do electrolysis and you die. I mean, it's painful. It, it is painful. I started to do that because over here they require it to be done before they'll do surgery here. Over there, you're under. They just scrape it all off and it's done. 
Interesting. Because electrolysis is a very expensive process here. I mean, if I wanted to do electrolysis on my face, which I mean, my hair has gotten thinner. I still have to shave about every four or five days, just not like I used to. And uh, and I've had some electrolysis. Now the average male, the average male face has a hundred thousand hairs on it. An electrolysis that probably between sixty and eighty dollars an hour can pull two hundred and twenty hairs an hour off with a forty percent regrowth that they have to do again. Wow. So if you do the math, hundred thousand hairs, eighty dollars an hour, forty percent regrowth, two hundred twenty. Uh, it's forever and all the money you have. Yeah, that's crazy. Or, that's the most expensive part of transitioning is if you want to remove the hair. Huh, I mean, I uh, guess that makes sense. Could laser. You could do laser on your hair and it would, it would kill it. It may grow back in a few years, but I couldn't do because it won't do it on blonde or gray hairs. It does not affect it. Interesting. So, wow. But if you have dark hair, it'll work. Just a side note. Yeah, no, this is... Is... <laughs> Let me ask you one more thing. Um, you think you want. It, it, it seems like just, uh, you know, in the mainstream media and the news cycle and everything, like, there's, there's so much discussion and attention towards like the trans community or the gay community or LGBTQ and all the other letters that they've added. Uh, ABC, do you think that's ultimately a good thing or do you not necessarily... <laughs> you think they're just putting way too much attention or do you actually think this is good? Cause it opens discussions and, you know, has people talking about things. Okay. Now there's, there's, there's several points of view there. One is LBGT. The T was put on there cause they didn't know where else to put it. Okay. Okay. So, you know, that's what I said. Yeah. I have gay friends and my part of the gay community. Not really, you know, I don't relate to them. Do I have a lot of trans friends? I have a couple, but we don't talk to each other very often because we're living our lives. We're people. Yeah, sure. You know, we don't all huddle up and, and have this major plot. I mean, we used to have a couple of off, they're not off color, but off key jokes that, you know, uh, how do you tell the difference between a transsexual that's had the surgery and a transvestite, which is a crossdresser? Well, a transsexual wears the comfortable shoes. You know, they don't have the still <laughs> heels flaunting around. Or, uh, What's the difference between a transsexual and a transvestite? About six months. <laughs> and those are just jokes we used to have on you know, just because if we can't if we can't laugh at ourselves, who and I don't think we are as big a the transgender menace as a big of an issue as people think. I think we're a very, very low percentage of the population. I think some people relate to being I identify as this today or that today to be important in themselves. Mm. I, I don't think I think that we're, they're making a big deal over a very small percentage. And I am always been a believer the good for the many, not the good for the few. You know, that's what this country's founded on the good for the many. Don't go out of your way for me. I'll, I'll get by. I'll make my life. Mm -hmm. I don't expect anything for free. I don't expect any special considerations. Just treat me as a person. That's all. I mean, any more than that, why should I, why should I get anything, anything special because I'm trans? Oh, well, yeah. What am I going to get? A funding from the government? I, <laughs> no. You know, let's stop. You know, uh, I worked hard all my life. You know, I'm kind of kicked back now and doing what I want to do. You know, I see a lot of people out, out and about and talk to them and stuff. And some of them say he, some of them say she, some of them don't say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which isn't true. No, they'll all say something, but. And I never, never correct anybody unless it's over and over and over again. Yeah, I'll sure. I haven't been a he for like 15 years, whatever. You referenced a couple of times that you live in like a redneck community. And you would think like in general, rednecks would probably be less accepting of, you know, people who are a little bit different. Huh? You would think. Yeah, you would think. Uh, has that not been your experience or? It hasn't been a problem for me. You know, my psychiatrist kind of summed it up saying 80% of the population doesn't give a shit. They're too busy in their own lives. 10% will want to live through you vicariously, and the other 10% will never accept you. I said, well, I can live with those percentages. <laughs> those numbers <And> I, aren't bad. <laughs> oh, 